Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com. Today I'm going to show you how to remove the drywall from this wall. It may sound like a pretty simple thing, and really it is. But there's a couple key things that a person should remember before they start a, a job like that. First of all, one of the things you want to look for is look for any electrical that might be in the wall, any signs that there could be electrical. Obviously, down here we've got a receptacle, so we know there's going to be some wiring. We don't know if it's coming up through the floor to that receptacle or whether it's actually above that, we don't know. But at least we have an idea that there could be some wiring in there. So check all the way around, check the other side of the wall. In this case, I know there's about three or four plug-ins and a switch over there. So we know there's definitely going to be some wiring in there that we need to be careful of. Uh, what I would do is uh, then find the, the appropriate breakers in your electrical panel, shut the power off to all those areas, just in case you happen to nick one, you don't want to uh, short something out you know, electrocute yourself or, or start a, a bit of a fire. So uh, that's, that's very important. Uh, something else that could be in the wall, there could be plumbing in there, there could be water lines, uh, drain lines, that sort of thing. Those are a little harder to find, but obviously if you're cutting through a wall that, or going to tear drywall off that, uh, you know, has a sink or something obviously to deal with plumbing, uh, you're going to know that there, there should be something in there to be aware of too. Uh, not a bad idea, just turn the main water supply off just in case. Uh, even if you're not too sure whether there is anything there or not. Okay, so check those sorts of things. Uh, you want to remove anything, any obstacles that are in the way. Uh, this grill I'm going to take off down here. There's a cold air return grill. And uh, so I'm going to start with that. We'll just pop down here. We'll pop these off quick. Get them out of our way. These grills are, they overlap onto the drywall, so if you left it in place, you're just going to end up bending the heck out of it, trying to rip the drywall off. So we'll get that out of the way. I'm also going to remove this uh, piece of baseboard here. So we've got that. We've got that. Now another thing we want to do, I'm just going to throw my safety glasses on. We're going to go up top and uh, use a utility knife and make a cut right in the corner up here where the drywall meets the ceiling. Because when this was originally finished, there would be a, a corner bead in there of uh, paper that basically keeps that from cracking and showing up all the time. So you want to cut that because if you don't, uh, and you go to pull the, the wall drywall off, it could rip that paper corner bead off partially back here, which wrecks your ceiling. If you're trying to preserve the ceiling, then you're going to have a bunch of work patching it up. So just like I said, nice sharp blade, put it right in that corner. Make a pass all the way across there a couple times. That'll usually save you a lot of aggravation. Uh, with, so that you don't destroy the ceiling that you're trying not to. Okay, so I cut all the way along there. The next thing I'm going to want to do is take uh, just a simple uh, drywall saw and I'm going to pick a spot about, I usually pick three or four feet off the floor and I'll uh, jam the saw through the drywall wall carefully and start to make a cut and I'm going to cut all the way across right across the wall it doesn't have to be necessarily straight or anything it's just kind of a starting point so that you can kind of get a hold of the drywall so with this type of saw like I said you want to pick a spot where you're you're not going to be into a stud so I can tell here that I'm kind of in a hollow area or hollow sounding area so I can uh, put my saw in there and start away so just put the point against the drywall Use the palm of your hand to kind of stab through. And then once you're through, just start sawing away. Now you'll feel as you go along, as you come up to any obstacles. In this case, I can tell I've hit a, uh, the edge of a stud there. I'm just going to flatten the angle of the saw out just a little bit more until I get past the stud and then I can kind of feel where the saw was able to move back again. Now, you don't want to go 
too aggressive here. Like I said, there's, there's still going to be some wiring, possibly some plumbing inside of there. So if you go uh, basically perpendicular to the wall and start making big strokes, you're not going to be able to tell. You could catch a wire in there and you'll have it uh, either slashed or cut right off by the time you realize you did anything. So keep your blade out a little bit on a little more of an angle flat to the wall. That way your blade isn't protruding too far in there. Uh, so I'm just going to keep cutting all the way along here. When you get to the outside corners, this one just has a protector on there for wallpaper. When you get to the outside corners, you can't see it, but there's going to be a metal corner bead underneath there. So you'll, you'll hear that when you kind of hit it. So just once you get up to that, just kind of stop there. You'll be good. I'll just go back here and finish off this cut back to the other corner. Just like so. Okay, so we've, we've made that first initial cut. And this is just to kind of give us a starting point to be able to get a hold of the drywall, start uh, pulling it off. Actually, one thing I forgot to do on this plug-in, uh, you not only want to take the cover off, but you actually want to take the, the plug-in out. So remember, we've turned the power off here so we don't uh, short anything out or get electrocuted. I'm just going to pull this plug right out. And if it's got enough wire to allow you to do it, just kind of tip it like that. That way when you pull this drywall off, it doesn't get, shouldn't get caught up on it and break the wire or do any damage to anything else. Okay, so we've got that. So I've made that cut. We're just going to go to a spot uh, in between studs. I think I got a stud there and one about here. I'm just going to go in there. Now, if I had, a, if I had my little flat bar, you probably could just, this one's a little thick, but well, I can still get it in there. You can see how I got that through the crack there. I've been able to pry the drywall out. Now, I don't want to stick my fingers in there because the second I pull this bar out, that's going to want to spring back, the drywall is, and uh, pinch my fingers. So I just want to get my hammer in there to kind of take up that space. And you can see how the, that whole piece, almost like a whole sheet, wants to come off in this case. It won't always do that. It might come off in smaller pieces, but... This one uh, looks like it's going to come off pretty good. So there'll generally be some screws or nails holding it on, maybe a little bit of adhesive. So now that I've got it to a point where it's kind of loose, I'm just going to pull. And this one's going to come off real nice. So I'll go back to this corner. Okay, that's, this is what usually happens. You end up getting pieces like this. We've got wallpaper on here as well, so it's... Uh, making it a little more stubborn. For the most part, this whole piece is going to come off. That wasn't so bad. I'll get this out of the way. So now you can start to see uh, what we're dealing with. Obviously, we've taken the drywall off the backside already uh, earlier. Uh, so we've got that off. Um, you know, if, when you're doing your first side, obviously you might still see drywall on the backside there. But now we're starting to see some of the electrical that could have caused us some issues uh, right there in that area. Luckily thing, we had it uh, all turned off, so even if we did catch it or something, uh, we shouldn't have caused any problems. Um, so we've got that main bottom part off. I'll just see if this corner piece will come off. Without too much hassle. So there, I've got that one off. Now, same thing with the top. Now this. If you're working by yourself, you probably don't want this whole thing to come off uh, in quite a big as a, a piece as the bottom did. So you may want to make a cut just down here like we did before. So I'm just going to do that quickly so that if this decides it's going to come off in a half decent chunk, it's uh, manageable by one person. Okay, like that. So then again, we can just grab a hold and just start to peel away the pieces that want to come free. Okay, 
You can see here that metal corner bead that I was talking about starting to be exposed now that the, uh, the drywall has come off. But you can see that piece there that uh, you can't really cut through with that handsaw. So just be careful, that'll be sharp as well. Okay, so we're starting to get there. If you look up here at the top, you'll see because I uh, cut that with the knife, it should come away without causing too much damage to the ceiling. One more piece here. So you can see it opening up here. I'm just gonna pull down a bit. Like so. So we've been able to remove it right up to the drywalled ceiling. I don't know if this is a good way to see. And you can see we, we didn't even disturb the uh, stipple that was on this existing ceiling here. So if we would have not cut that and uh, just started pulling away at it, you see how this paper's kind of exposed here? That right there, there's actually the other half of it up here on the ceiling under that stipple. So that would have tried to peel away there when we were reefing on it, so would have just caused damage. So same thing on this side. We're just gonna see what comes off, what size pieces. And, and I don't know if you noticed, I don't know if you noticed as I was doing this, there's very few fasteners in it. They've actually, uh, if you look here, you can see spots spots on the studs. This is where they've actually put some uh, beads of adhesive, held the sheet up there and then somebody came along and just basically tacked it up. This would have been where the joint in the lower sheet and the upper sheet were. So they put a nail in each sheet. Looks like they put one in the middle and they would have had a few up on the, out. so basically they just did the edges and one in the middle and then the adhesive held it in place, so. So I think, uh, I think you've got a pretty good idea now basically what to do. Uh, it's important to have the safety glasses on as well because uh, you might have noticed as I'm pulling away there, there's a bit of dust flying around. There's, you know, pieces of gypsum themselves. Um, if you're, you know, if, if dust bothers you, uh, you may even want to have a dust mask on, even just one of those cotton ones, um, you know, because there is a little bit of dust in the air. Uh, doing a small wall like this, it doesn't stir up a lot, but if you're doing a fair bit of demo, there's definitely going to be dust floating around. Um, so throw a mask on, but I don't think there's uh, really anything else I can tell you. If you, once you get this apart, obviously you're going to just throw it in the garbage or, uh, take it to the landfill or where, whatever your municipality allows you to do with it. And, um, that'll be all you can do. So hopefully this gave you a little more insight into what you'll find, not only before you start the project, but once you've finished it as far as seeing what the structure and what you're going to see, what you could see inside the walls. So thanks for watching and uh, tune in next time.